Welcome to Scene Through Glass and welcome to the start of Drive the World 2.0. The Far Eastern flyaway countries are behind me and today marks the beginning of a three, four month drive around Europe followed directly by a three, three and a half month drive around America. Now some of you might be asking, hold on a sec Sam, where is your 911 Carrera T? Because that is most certainly not it. Well, thanks to the guys at Cars, my shipping partner, I found out that my car is currently just outside Yemen on a boat, still on its way back from Australia. So, in the meantime, Porsche UK have very kindly lent me this Turbo S to use for the next few weeks until my car makes it back to mainland Europe. Anyway, I'm a little bit late for my train because I've been farting around getting coffee and taking photos of this car, so let's get on board and I'll tell you a little bit more about what's coming up over the next few weeks. You might have noticed that this car has the optional £10,000 carbon wheels. So, as always, I'm in the wider, larger carriages of the Eurotunnel. Does mean I'm surrounded by coaches with kids going to Disneyland. I'm, I have to say, I'm a little bit more jealous of them than of my own ship. Anyway, here's a map. As I said, I want to talk you through what's to be expected over the next couple of weeks. So, we are currently doing our crossing from Folkestone across to Calais on the Euro Tunnel, which I've done many, many times before. Now, usually, I go from Calais all the way through the middle of France down to Monaco, but we're doing things differently, and I'm actually gonna be coming this way across through Le Mans, which I've only done once, and then all the way down the western side of France towards Biarritz, because over the next few weeks in this Turbo S, I'm actually gonna be passing through Spain and Portugal. So we've got an overnight stop in Bilbao, gonna go along the northern coast of Spain, through Oviedo, and making our way into Portugal to, uh, I've lost it, Porto, there we go. We then come down through Porto towards Lisbon, and then making my way back into Spain and across to Marbella, if I can find my, my <laughs> this is gonna really show up my really bad geography, but Marbella, about there. Um, it's not actually on this map, but after Marbella, oh no it is, hold on a sec, we come all the way along the Spanish coast and drop across to Ibiza via ferry, uh, a couple of days in Ibiza and then over to Mallorca, which I'm really excited about, before making our way to Barcelona. Now, in Barcelona, we're getting rid of this Turbo S and Porsche have lined up the brand new 992 Carrera S for me to use, so that, I mean, Massively excited, a little bit nervous because I worry that after that my car might feel a bit cramped. But we picked that up in Barcelona for the drive over to Monaco, and we're in Monaco for about five or six days with the 902. And that is where my Carrera T should get to, or that's where the reuniting should take place with my Carrera T. After that, we we'll continue all around Europe. But that is what you can expect for the next few weeks with this Turbo S and the 992. Fuel, which means I had to wave goodbye to that DB11. For two seconds I felt like it was me and Paul Wallace in a sort of separate life, me driving a turbo and him driving a DB11. It made me a little bit sad that the other UK YouTubers weren't with me. So many times I've done this drive as a big convoy, but anyway, things, you know. Next, there's always... Next. Oh. I have to prepare. It's automatic. Put your cat in the machine, please. Thank you. Thank you. I got told off. I promise this is not the only reason I picked this service station. I, I promise. I, I promise. I promise this is not the reason I picked this service station. 
a few hours later and you join me on the Circuit de la Sarthe, the Le Mans 24 hour circuit and I'm currently on the Mole Sand Strait, one of the most iconic pieces of racing tarmac in the world. I'm going to be honest, it's a, a lot busier than I thought. I had visions of coming here and getting the drone and all these quiet, there's a there's one of the, oh, I've forgotten all the corner names now. That's the second chicane on the Mole Sand. Is it Indianapolis or, oh, sorry. I'm not really a WEC fan. I'm not really an endurance fan. I, I, I enjoy it, but I, I don't watch it obsessively. So my knowledge of the circuit de la Salle isn't that great. So let's move on and talk about Formula One. <laughs> because I suddenly realized I hadn't discussed the first race of the season. Quite a monumental thing in my year and I'm sure for lots of you it's a monumental thing in your years too uh, I have to say I was thoroughly disappointed because after all the pre-season hype of competitiveness and close racing it just fell apart didn't it it just all absolutely went to crap and I woke up early we were still in Cape Town uh, for the race and I woke up at 6 or 7 a.m or something like that and I actually fell asleep it's the first time I think I've fallen asleep in a Formula One race in years nothing happened nothing happened spoiler alert if you haven't watched it don't Nothing happens. Um, so yeah, let's let's see how the rest are. Oh, more, more 24-hour circuit curbing. <sighs> Any kind of racetrack curbing just gets. Any racetrack in the world where you can drive on, it makes it immediately a cooler kind of racetrack. Can I go down there? That looks quiet. I'm going to go down there. I'm just ex I'm just trying to explore as much as possible. Uh, but yes, let's see what the Formula One season has to hold. Lots of you who aren't Formula One fans are going to be like. Nothing happened, no surprise there. Sounds like every F1 season. Well, because <laughs> there have been many exciting years recently. Just quite concerned that this year might not be one. But anyway, yes, yeah, so let's continue my exploration of world endurance. I'm not actually going to be here this year for the Le Mans 24 hours, so I might as well get the maximum out of this place whilst I can right now. It's beautiful. The problem with driving a right-hand drive car in a left-hand drive country. There's the buzzer. This is what you call a booking.com top find. I have lucked into this place. Honestly, we were just looking for a stopover point on the way down to Biarritz and I was just sort of cruising geographically and, geographically and also the listings on booking. And I think this place is awesome. It's nothing special, but it's just a really nice location and we've got this awesome balcony and the town looks stunning. So we're gonna dump our bags, freshen up and then head into town to get some food where I wanna have a little chat with you guys about the last three months really because the sort of first quarter of Drive the World is now down. I feel like we need to do some reflecting. So yes, let's go. I'm going to be honest, I was hoping for like a sort of outdoor bar -y type vibe to do a bit of a quick fire Q&A about the first three months of this trip. I've ended up at a very, very quiet restaurant. A bit too awkward to do this right now. But what I will say uh, is that Tours is beautiful. A uh, very historic town. Uh, a sort of base used for exploring the Loire Valley region, which is the famous chateau region of northern France. Um, but yes, I'm going to enjoy my food and I think do the chat either, well, either tonight or tomorrow. I guess you'll find out before I know.
Well, good morning. Uh, I walked past this place last night on our Adventures Around tours, and whilst it was closed, I was like, that's where I want to go for breakfast. Because when I'm not at Starbucks, I do like an independent coffee shop. But yes, um, obviously the sort of quick fire Q&A about the first three months of this year's trip didn't happen last night, because as I mentioned, that restaurant was awkwardly quiet, and it was just uncomfortable to film in there. So uh, after dinner, we did a quick whip around the town, and then headed back to our hotel. You join us bright and, well, it's really not bright and early. I was going to say bright and early, it's 10.30. I think maybe our first line of the year. But uh, I keep saying R because my girlfriend Vicky is still with me. No, she's not going to appear on camera yet, so just just stop asking. Um, but she's going to help me right now with the quickfire Q&A because we thought it would be helpful for us both to prompt each other and reflect on the first three months. So let's, we're going to do this quick and then we're going to jump back in the turbo and crack on south to Biritz. But just... Just okay, so, well, let's just start with the most obvious one, like where was your favourite place? Favourite place in New Zealand. Where's the second favourite? Second favourite, <laughs> so, uh, between Hong Kong and Tokyo. Okay. Let's keep, keep it going, keep okay. it churning. Best road we've driven on? Mm, okay, controversial one there. I'm going to say in New Zealand again, on the North Island, the day we did... Uh, no, it was after the Coromandel, uh -huh. after that event, and we drove... No, so where did we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was that it? It was from the Coromandel to Napier. Yes, okay, and the road was amazing. It was actually yeah. quite a big public road, but it was just incredible sunset, amazing views. Okay, so that's my favourite yeah. road. That was great. Okay, so what's the our best coffee slash breakfast that we've had? Because you're obsessed with that. So. Okay, my favourite one. I know you. You, you know, uh, Australia. Uh, Port Macquarie, we couldn't sleep, we woke up oh super early with jet lag, went down to the beach, and what was it called? I've forgotten the name of it now, I've been telling everyone uh, about it. Oh, salty, anyway. Salty crew. Salty, salty crew, and it was this tiny little crew. like beach hut, and there was like a whole like mother's gang of yoga lights all hanging out, they'd just done their sort of 6 a.m. yoga. They were all above 50. All above 50, all female, and I was just like totally at home. Uh, had the most delicious coffee, amazing like smoothie acai bowl. Uh, so that was my favourite breakfast. Okay, two more questions because we're, we're uh, it's going on longer, longer than I thought. Okay, what's your favourite day of filming? It would be easy to say the 918 Spider, but I'm going to shake it up and say Hong Kong, the Pagani Phantasma Evo. Okay, I wasn't there. You weren't there, so maybe that's why it's my favourite. <laughs> anyway, this road's getting super busy, so I think we'll quit it there. I'm going to do a full length, much wider sort of Q&A element for the members section of the website. So if you haven't subscribed and you want to know more, go check that out. Any members, se members, any members, uh, log on that will be going off in the next couple of days. But yes, now I'm going to enjoy my Le Petit Atelier uh, coffee uh, and then we'll be jumping in the turbo and cracking on. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I love a French service station, honestly. I think some of the best in the world. Anyway, before I tuck into my meatballs and potato, I thought I should probably talk a little bit about this car, because since introducing it, I haven't really spoken much about it. Uh, Turbo S, for some reason, has never been a Porsche that I've lusted after that much. Obviously, top of the road going range, except the GT products. Insanely expensive, and this one with the carbon wheels is ridiculous, but it's now the old 911, because the 992 is out. It is very good. It's, as in terms of a grand tourer, it's fantastic because it picks up speed terrifyingly fast. You just don't even notice it. It's so smooth through the gears and on the road. It's just the ultimate sort of cruiser. I'll be interested to see what it's like once we get onto a tight and twisty road, whether it then really turns on and becomes a, a super mountain road basher as well. I haven't even gone to Sport Plus mode yet, so God knows how terrifyingly fast that is. To look at it, it does look good. I mean, I, I maybe I'll change some elements of the spec. I'm going to say controversially, I don't actually like the carbon fibre wheels. I think they look a bit odd. Uh, a hand-me-down from the Turbo S exclusive series or exclusive edition, which was amazing. But anyway, it's fantastic, and I do worry that when I get my Carrera T-Pack, my Carrera T-Back, 
that car's going to have made my car feel incredibly slow, but let's wait and see. Anyway, for now, meatballs and potato. Well, from last night's great hotel success, welcome to a rather small bedroom in Beer Ridge. Doesn't it? When you use these websites online, you don't always strike gold. But anyway, who cares? Because I've now made it to the south of France. And for me, for some reason, any sort of Euro trip never feels like it's properly started until you've hit the south of France. However, this year we're going to be going all over, aren't we? North, north of France, north into Scandinavia, and all these different things. But say, so I'm excited to now be down here. So, I'm going to settle in. I hope you've enjoyed the first video of Drive the World 2.0, the European leg. Lots of exciting things to come. Give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.